Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi. Wa alaikum salam rahmatullah. Sayyidi, how to apply this reality to the best of our ability when we are single moms raising our kids and needing to work? InshaAllah Allah Azawajal give you from the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad to be the one in your home so that uh, Allah never leaves the servant without his rahmah. So when the person is, is struggling to keep their, their lives and they're trying to keep their deen and their practices, Mawlana Shaykh described that uh, that one becomes the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad to guide the, the house and to provide the, that energy, that reality like a father for his nation. So Abu Arwa, the father of the souls of his nation has a tremendous light and as a result then the souls of awliya continuously watching over families. And that's why then these types of talks are to recalibrate people to come back to the way of submission. You know that the, the, the satanic system is just not working. So that becomes the example of the elevator, the three chairs. In life we, 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 they're giving these nice analogies so that it's easy to converse with the children and, and family members. So there's something going on, say, are you going up or are you going down? Ah, oh, Baba, I want to go here. Okay, but are you going up or are you going down? Oh, I'm going down, but you can bring me back up later. So. <laughs> But at least they're clever. <laughs> so in life you're either going up towards heavenly stations or your choices are going to take you down or the three chairs. That as soon as somebody has a character, so oh, who's sitting on your chair right now? Well clearly it looks like shaitan because you're yelling and screaming. So these three chairs become our understanding. Now the binary is as important. That you know, are you being a nukht or you're being the one? So you enter your home and battle begins and say, look, oh, look, if you're going to be the one, I'm going to be nothing. But that's not the system here, that's not the Divinely Barakah. We want to go now with satanic system then do as you like. But the heavenly system that cannot be ignored has to be one and, and nukht. So if you want to be the one then it's not going to have barakah. If you want the barakah of the heavens then you tell your family, you guys have to. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Narjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. To learn the path of being a dot and I will take the responsibility of the one and guidance and inshaAllah. And the more the nukht is practicing, like we said of the example of dunya, oh I don't, I don't want that person to be the one, for well, then you practice to be a nukht. And with the power of being a nukht your du'as will be accepted and then Allah will guide everything. So either way nobody loses, it's just everybody's playing the wrong role. Because if you take the man and try to make him into a nukht at home, you're corrupting the system. And as a result that person drifts away, goes away because they're no longer able to be a man in that reality, inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaikum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah Sayyidi, what if your boss is a bad person and yells at you? Then, then either you can get another job because they're giving you rizq and sustenance and you find another job that is, is, is more peaceful. But if you take the money of somebody to eat then you owe them the ability to serve. 
that I'm going to try my best to have good character, not answer back and try my best. But if the person's oppressive like anything Allah says, this earth is wide, go somewhere else, means you go to a different job. But people have hidden characteristics where they have an answer for everything. They give a comment and a suggestion when a suggestion wasn't necessary or wasn't even wanted. They don't really know how to be a nuqt at work because in their mind they think, oh I'm really the one, actually I should take your job. And they actually think they're better than the manager and this is where then they have continuous difficulties. So the whole process is not easy, you know, just being a dot when you even think you're more intelligent than everybody in your office, then you know you have to hope somebody recognizes that and makes you the one. But for now you're a nuqt. But even then you'll be a nuqt for the owners of the corporation, it'd be just managers may be one thing. So in our life is continuous role playing. And we have to enter into a role and figure out, in this role where am I, right? So certain areas you may be a one, you walk into an area of a, another person, you learn how to be a dot and nuqt and shut off, inshaAllah. <coughs> As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As salaam wa rahmatullah. Uh, can this also apply for the students' role with their teachers in schools? Can we apply this to guide our kids to be respectful and submit to their teachers? Sure, right, because they have a teacher too, they have their shaykh. So what would be the difference? If you're disrespectful, anytime you leave the power of the dot, there's no more learning taking place. Because in the dot has the symbolisms of submission and good manners. By virtue of good manners learning will take place, right? Because there has to be a conveyance. So imagine in our electronics we said before there's a master unit, dummy unit. Sorry for the names, that's what they called it, the computer guys or they called it even slave unit. Why? One is conveying a signal, the other one is receiving a signal. If you turn both on what would happen? Absolutely nothing because you're sending a signal, it's sending a signal, there's nothing happening there. So the fact that your TV works nicely at home is that you press the remote and it changed the channel. But imagine every time you press the remote it send back a signal to you that it wants to go to a different channel. So it means there's not going to be any conveyance here. So when they want to teach it's the same, you're teaching from your mind, from your heart depending upon the level of the teaching taking place. Somebody has to send the signal, somebody has to receive the signal and that's our life. So Divine Presence is more. We want to receive God's grace not give God grace. So if you're going to receive it you shut off. You want to receive the presence of Prophet we're not giving anything to that presence. They have no reason to even accept us in that presence. So we shut off as a result of being off, the positivity moves towards us. But if you're trying to push out a positive signal, I'm going to send grace to you, you don't even get near that reality because your energy already repelling yourself from that presence. So that's in every aspect of our lives, again without oppression. Somebody gives an example of they're oppressing me and beating me, no, 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 that you have to flee. This is all in normal circumstances, normal aggression at work, normal arguments and disputes that people have. In those people have to learn their roles that I'm learning to efface myself. And if I efface and I efface and I efface actually I'll be gaining a power because I'll make a du'a at work and things start to happen. They gave me a raise out of nowhere because they bother, bother, I have good character. And you begin to ask your Lord who accepts your nuqt and things happen that you can't imagine. Instead of again being the viking and trying to fight your boss to get a raise, that's not going to happen. You're going to get fired. But you be nothing, nothing, nothing and begin to make your prayers. That I need more sustenance my Lord, I need more help with this, something to open for me. Say, no problem, I'm happy with your character and I'm going to write your paycheck and I put you in this position or I put you in that position. So that becomes our, our life, sort of lifelong process and path inshaAllah. 
Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, what's uh, Imam Ali's relation to the Nukt, Nukt and these teachings of being off? <laughs> is that from Coco? <laughs> Which is that? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> he was asking me about <laughs> Imam Ali and Sayyidina no, Malik and stuff, yeah. No, Imam Ali is the, is the, is the Nukt under the Ba, means represents a Qudra from Divinely Presence and represents a, a Divinely Power. So this is uh, the immense reality uh, of this Divinely love that we have for Allah for Prophet And as a result of the reality of that bab and the gate towards that Divinely Presence is immense power. But we won't go too deep into that because that's a whole different subject inshaAllah. But love these holy people, they are extremely blessed. And the more blessed people that you love and learn to be a nukht is important. So the audacity of somebody to say, well, why you say, Ya Ali, why you have Ali? Is, is that a nukht or one? When somebody opened their mouth like that, it's one, a satanic one, right? Because if you're a humble person you would never ask something like that. Why not to say, Ya? They say, Ya your name, you say, Ya to your children. Ya Hamza come here. So in everyday life it's not a problem. But when shaitan is in somebody then these types of things come. So in every aspect of our life loving the companions shouldn't be something difficult. Loving the Ahlul Bayt shouldn't be something difficult unless you have a one in you. But when you're nukht you know that they're all huge ones and I'm nothing. And if they gaze upon my nothingness, I should be so blessed. To have them all gaze upon me, any one of them gaze upon me, means we're continuously trying to make these holy souls to be happy with us. And that's again in the same understanding that we took a path to be nothing, to be a nuq, to be a dot, inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam. Can you please guide us? How do we make our children to become a nuqt when they are so much into their social media and Netflix all day? Yeah, it's very difficult. <laughs> we pray for you. <laughs> that's, the, that's the reason that shaitan is doing that, right? So the shaitan is doing that so that to train them to become one. So now they're going after the two, three-year-olds. So that to eventually take them from the homes of people. And the purpose of making them to think they're something else and someone else. But there's an immense fight in the last days to just keep the, the qibla of your family in the right direction. But it requires the primary elements to understand the one in the nukht. If there's two ones in the house the kids would definitely turn out to be a one, right? So that's what the corruption is. So how can you train the children if the other ones are acting like ones? But when, when the, the woman acts like a nukht, like she's from the rib of that one, there's taslim in the home because it's reinforced back onto the children that be like this, pray like this, read like this, do like this. But when shaitan knows the system of, I'll make these both to be ones, they'll be fighting so much that this one will be lost and won't accept anything that's being taught or anything that's been said because again it's not the what you say but what you do in life. You know, everybody has a talk but you're not going to give your children a talk, they're looking at your example. And that's why the talk for tonight is if, if there's a one in the house then everybody respects him as the one. If you take away the respect of the one it's like a, a masjid that you walk into, he's the imam. And every day you walk in and insult the imam, you're nobody imam, you're like this imam, you're dirty imam, you're like this imam, how are you going to pray behind him? And you're going to push him aside and say, that's like, well you're even the imam, could you do that? No. But how then you go and, and degrade the imam of your home? In the eyes of your children, in the ears of your children. 
Then the children grow up and say, he's not an imam either, yeah, he's not the imam. They won't have any respect for that imam. So that becomes then the destruction of the home. As alaykum Sayyidi Wa alaykum salam wa <coughs> Sayyidi, what makes for a good connection? Does it come in the form of a feeling, a physical sensation, etc., during meditation? Yeah, if you, if you feel it, you know. If you don't, you don't. Means it's not something that you have to ask. That when you meditate and connect, the heart has to open. You have to feel the heat, you have to feel the energy, you have to feel the presence. It's something real. This is not psychology class or philosophy class where we give you the philosophy of meditation. You close your eyes, be sincere, do your breathing, do the, the system that they've outlined. Help me at nurmuhammad.com if you don't have the outline of it and begin to do your breathing with sincerity and, and discipline of doing it every day, connecting with the shaykh, you're going to feel them overtake your heart. And you're going to feel an energy come onto your heart and begin to push an energy through. And more and more of that energy you begin to heat up, your hands heat up, the back of your neck heat up because a, a greater power than yourself is moving into your being. And that's from Allah's might, Atiullah, Ati Rasulu Ulul Amri Minkum because the energy that we have is limited to what I've done, my ibadah, my worshipness. But they're like a satellite that if you meditate then from Divinely Grace they begin to reflect off their satellite a much more powerful energy than what you have. And that then becomes something that magnifies your signal. So when your internet is weak at home, you subscribed for Wi-Fi but you live in the basement, what? But you have Wi-Fi, you believe in Allah but Allah sends you a booster, right? So then you bring the booster downstairs, what happens? It's taking that Wi-Fi signal and boosting it downstairs where your signal sign are kind of weak. So same for people, their practices, whatever they've done in their life, whatever it is, the signal that Allah's given for them they didn't achieve. And as a result they feel nothing because levels of darkness has been put upon them. So the shaykh is like a booster signal, as soon as you do the muraqabah the shaykh is coming with a reflection of your reality for you like a satellite and begin now to send it because anytime you take we described it in all of the muraqabah talks. You want to take the sunlight and then you get a little mirror that takes the sun and pinpoints that, you played it like that with the kid as a child, the mirror and the sun. You can burn things because you take the power of that sun and you bring it like a fine laser. You burn through paper, you can burn through many things, the same concept. The shaykh is a mirror with all the zikr and, and practices and everything that they have dressed upon them. As soon as you meditate with their presence they mirror the presence of the Divine, the sunlight and the sunshine of heavens. And as a result they begin to bring a very intense light onto your reality that burns through all of your corruption and egoism and bad character and begins to now laser into the heart and into the soul inshaAllah. So it has an effect, you feel the heat of that fire and that's what's important inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah So why is it when you do something that is good there are so many that attack on social media. How to protect yourself from negativity when others appreciate it? When others don't appreciate it, hmm. yeah you just do what you do not for them, you do it for God. More so than ever, you know you take the, the, the sites and you post them. You go to the charity site, the reason the charity site is on Shopify is that each of those buttons are like a product and you take that with the box and the upper arrow and share. You share that to the social media where sponsor a well, sp sponsor the food, sponsor these things. Means that by sharing those things immediately the people can click on it and go to a, 
a product, a donation entity or, or item. Well that has a tremendous amount of barakah and blessings and by social media presence we can share that everywhere. But do you think shaitan's happy with that? No. You take an article, share it, shaitan's not happy with that. You take a video, share it, shaitan's not happy with that. And that is the great struggle. It wasn't to be people to appreciate what we're posting but just to post, post a lot. Take the charity items, post them. MashaAllah our charity projects are now all over the world. The base of donors are from all over the world. It's not based on here. But because Vancouver is so active as our center, people think it's all from here. But it's all over the world. So now everybody's coming here to see what's going on. Three major charities are now coming into Vancouver, mm. thinking that the Vancouver population are the ones funding all of this. But no, no, this donor base is worldwide because of the online activities. And that's what's so important about it is that the tariqah has the ability to move the hearts of people. So from all over the world they're posting, 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 tens of thousands of posts exposed to all these people and people ordering wells and giving food and, and, and doing the qurbans. Yeah, it's not from ten people sitting here, you know it's the thousands, in the thousands that are coming from around the world. So this is the barakah of the tariqah strength and that how it motivates people to be of service and s service that's so easy. Some of our guys here that go out and give food on a weekly basis, you guys give oh, like several times a week, the khuyt, that's a lot of work. But you're sitting at home you can't post, you can't take your finger and take an article, post it, a video, post it, take a charity item, say, oh I want people to do some qurbans and I'm going to post five times on social media to these groups. They have big WhatsApp groups, 10, 20,000 people. Post the charity things in there for qurban, for all the wells, for anything. That's our strength. In, in about, Shahid is, is it a week? New app coming out, at least $100,000 worth of improvements on that app. We got bids, <laughs> at least $100,000 for that app to be improved. Wow. Yeah. So these guys are coming out with that app uh, in about a week. The new and improved Nur Muhammad app with all of these different and new functionalities because that's an amazing part of the tariqah, 20,000 active users clicking and doing their awrads, going through the charities, going through all of the different buttons, the services, the qibla uh, prayer f uh, times, qibla finder, all of these amazing things. And that's relying on our tariqah people posting, 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 posting like crazy. Especially when the app ads come out, you post it and share it everywhere. So that uh, people come to tariqah and uh, it's an amazing business card for tariqah. You know 20,000 people once its sharing functionality is, is updated, 20,000 people share to 20,000 people. Then all of a sudden you get 30,000, 40,000 subscribers and it just should be growing sort of at immense speed. But again this is from you know the core, strong, strong guys that are very committed inshaAllah and Allah give them more and more strength and nazar of Prophet inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Mawlana <coughs> Wa alaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah As you recommend, we do our best to negate our dreams, but what shall one do when their dreams keep unfolding in the daily life and creating deja vu <coughs> moments? Yeah, enjoy it, but don't share it. If it's just for you, then okay, it's an entertainment for you. But if you share it, now becomes dangerous because your nafs and shaitan are listening. And if they feel that, you know, this is going to be like a Netflix for people, then they're going to start now feeding you information that's not true. And then because they know that you're sharing it to people. So that's the problem with the ego coming into this type of interpretation business. So that's, that's why it's highly recommended not to. And if you're not sharing it to anyone and it continuously comes, then the greater possibility of the nafs entering is lowered. Because so I'm not sharing it with anyone so I'm just getting a lot of information for my own purpose if that's what Allah wants. As soon as I share it then I don't know is this what Allah wants or shaitan is feeding me now to tell people. One, because I look important now, people say, oh wow this guy had like amazing dream, let's all go to him. And then they start running to the person and, and start giving their dreams, dream interpretation. 
And then shaitan starts to communicate through people, oh tell him that order cheeseburger next time. Unnecessary information. It's not going to be something real, it's just going to be the waswases of shaitan inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Is the Christian 144,000 related to our 124,000? Yeah, I would say that they had a, a typo. <laughs> In the book of Revelations <laughs> it should have been 124,000 because it adds to seven. So for some reason they wrote it as 144 and they tried many times to to play with the book of Revelation and uh, its information. So they may have modified certain things. But the, the gist of it or the understanding of it is that uh, it's close. There's quite a number of saints and that the saints would be coming. The emerald throne is important because that's the presence of Prophet And all the book of Revelation negates what the Christians are teaching. So that's the astonishing proof and dalil that Allah gave to them. So when John goes to the emerald throne and he says, I saw the king, I saw the people sitting on a chair, I bowed down and the person lifted my head and said, no we are not God. Means he went into a presence, I don't know the exact words it was but he tried to bow down to who he saw as the king upon that throne and he said, seated next to the king is a lamb. Means that's Sayyidina Muhammad and Sayyidina Isa and when he tried to make a ruku and a bowing they lifted his head and said, no we're not God. And says that, that we are not God, you're in the emerald throne, means this is the presence, a Divinely Presence but we are not God, we're not Allah So then all of what they're saying that uh, there's a human that's God then it's not true and their own book has it's not true. So Book of Revelation is, is uh, very revealing and has a lot of uh, understanding for people. The emerald throne and that's why we wear green turbans and we're green and the presence of Prophet is green and, and everything to do with green so that the people would understand and have a sign because within every falsehood there has to be a sign left by Allah And that's one great sign for them is that the acknowledgement that these individuals are not God and Allah is, is the creator and is, is, is not His creation inshaAllah. Sayyidi, As Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah With the ever so changing, fast paced, corrupt political climate is a nuclear war destined before the revelation of Imam Mahdi? <laughs> yeah I would imagine so. That before the presence of Sayyidina Mahdi Salaam then the, 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 what is it called? The signs and the alamats all describe a, a war, a dukan, a smoke, a nuclear war. Some of the awliya then described that there was nuclear war and dukan hasn't come which was a great cloud of smoke that would cover the earth and cause boils and blisters upon people similar to radiation sort of toxicity or exposure to radiation. So these are all of the, the signs, these are the, the, the realities that are coming upon this earth. And we said before as they plan, we talked tonight in the office before we started that how sad is this life if you don't have faith? Means you'll be watching all of these social medias and they're running on the banks, they're finishing the money, they're gonna give us all of these shots, they're gonna kill us all, they're gonna kill us all, it's gonna kill us all. And if you don't have faith you look at these signs and jump off a roof because people are petrified now of what's coming. But with faith is Allah describes in Qur'an, although the shaitans plan, Allah plans better. Means that our Lord Almighty has already made a plan. They're just playing a certain role within His Divinely plan and they can do nothing that's not written by Allah He writes for them to play these things and then it ends. He writes for them to do these things and then it ends. And they tried so hard to do certain things and it didn't happen the way they wanted it to happen because again they don't have a belief that there is a Creator. But when you have a belief you think that all these signs, woo, it's near. But are you going to be destroyed and utter, utterly left alone? No. 
You have a belief in your Creator and that your Creator has a plan for you. So then it gives you a relief, immense relief more than ever that, you know, they're planning on throwing this and throwing that. Well, if God wants you protected, He's going to send spiritual beings that will immediately put a bubble of energy over you or move you into a different uh, dimension altogether. And that's not hard for Allah They're seeing it now all of Qur'an, that's why we describe all the stories of Qur'an are portals. Maryam went into their temple and became a portal to a different dimension and every time they came they saw food and fruits not from their time. Isn't that a portal? Completely different reality inside their space. Ashab al-Kahf they went into a cave, Allah made it a completely different dimension in which 309 years went. So all of Qur'an was a dalil for us, don't despair. All of Qur'an is a history of Allah creating these portals. And the strongest and most powerful portal is Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. If Allah opened that, say Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, they'll tell you step with your right foot and you move into a different area completely. And that becomes just different dimensions for people to understand. So all of Qur'an has examples of, of portals and, and dimensions and all of these things inshaAllah. We pray that Allah bless us and dress us from these holy nights inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. As alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.